Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, March 30th, 2014. I am David Knight, your host, and we're taking callers and talking about false flags, mockingbird media, covering up for the revelations that Turkey is trying to start the war for Syria for NATO. And of course, Turkey's been involved with NATO in some false flag operations before. During Operation Gladio, of course, that took place in Italy. It was Turkey that supplied a lot of the people who were going to run it. As Sibel Edmonds pointed out, they were called Babas or Godfathers in Turkey. These are guys who were some of the most dangerous organized crime figures in Turkish prisons were released and sent to run these Gladio attacks. And the Gladio attacks were done to, they were false flag operations, not to start a war, but to take down the Communist Party, which was winning in elections in Italy. They were put out as being, they were portrayed as being carried out by the Red Brigades, by the Communists, when in actuality they were carried out by NATO, using arms that had been pre-positioned in case the country had been overrun during a war with Russia. They went in and used these weapons to engage in terrorist attacks against the population of Italy and blame it on the Communists. And of course, Turkey and the Turkish government was involved in that. Now, it appears that Turkey is NATO's best hope for starting a war with Syria. We had a situation just recently where there was a shooting of planes and they were trying to use that as a pretext to go in. Of course, there are Turkish elections that are involved in this. There's a lot of corruption in Turkey. And they have jihadists who are threatening the sacred Turkish tomb, according to Fox News. Oh, but wait a minute. That was actually the Turkish government that was doing that. Listen, though, to the way that Fox News reported this on the 28th, on Friday. They said a man who's been dead for nearly 800 years could be the catalyst that draws Turkey into Syria's bloody civil war. Jihadists who poured into Syria have threatened to attack the sacred tomb of Suleiman Shah. Except that it wasn't jihadists who were threatening to do it. It was actually the head of Turkish intelligence, the chief of the military, who were recorded doing this. And that was leaked onto YouTube, and they shut down YouTube. They were saying things like, I will make a cause of war by ordering a missile attack on Turkey. What we're doing is going to be a direct cause of war. We're going to mount an attack on that place, on the same tomb that... Fox News is reporting about it. But Fox News says there is now a threat to that shrine. There are 25 Turkish soldiers currently there, and the Turkish government takes this threat very seriously because this is Turkish territory. They take it seriously? They're the ones making the threat. It's the Turkish government making the threat. But, of course, that was an interview that came out of, guess where? Voice of America. Remember Voice of America, Radio Free Europe? That was the organization that was created right after World War II, at the beginning of the Cold War. They were prohibited at that time from broadcasting news into America. Just last year, that prohibition has been lifted. We're going to be getting a lot more of that propaganda, a lot more especially since Mike Rogers is leaving the Senate Intelligence Committee, and he's now heading for talk radio. So who needs Voice of America when you got Mike Rogers on talk radio? It's going to be there. But there's also other things going on in Turkey. We've got um, Armenians, Christian Armenians accusing Turkey of aiding al-Qaeda rebels in an attack on Syrian Christian villages. Armenian leaders have accused Turkey of aiding al-Qaeda-affiliated rebel groups during their attack on a largely Armenian Christian village in northern Syria. And they said Turkey is, Turkey's facilitation of al-Qaeda-affiliated foreign fighters and their attacks on innocent civilians in Syria undermines ongoing U.S. and international efforts to bring peace to a country ravaged by violence for far too long. That was a chairman of the Armenian National Committee of America. So they're accusing Turkey of running al-Qaeda. And we know that NATO forces and John McCain were involved with al-Qaeda in Syria. And that was what they were talking about in this leaked tape. They said they're going to use al-Qaeda to stage this attack on the Suleiman tomb. So it's back as we've been telling you, it's actually the U.S. government really has been running al-Qaeda. They created it 
and they're running it still. Sorry, Rachel Maddow. It's a matter of record. We're going to be right back. We're going to be taking your calls. We've got people waiting. Marlin in Michigan and Dennis in Oregon. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Zach, this is Crystal Palace. Think no rat has declared DEFCON 3. Scramble all alert aircraft. I repeat, scramble all alert aircraft. The Whopper spends all its time thinking about World War III. Target selection complete. Time on target sequence complete. 22 Typhoon class submarines departing Petropavlovsk. Turning southbound at North Cap, bearing 095 degrees. Radar reports two unknown tracks are penetrating the Alaskan air defense zone. From the front lines of the information war. Flush the bombers, get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON 1. Are you prepared to destroy the enemy? You bet! Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. We'll keep control, but we'll keep it here at the top where it belongs. Three, two, one. Impact. Shall we play a game? How about global thermal nuclear war? Live. From the Infowars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. All units confirm weapons targeted and ready, awaiting launch codes. We are in a launch mode. Do you really believe that the enemy would attack without provocation? If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. We're in. Russians are still denying everything, sir. We have a Soviet submarine launch detection. I wish I didn't know about any of this. I wish I was like everybody else. Things then. The only winning move is not today. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. That was a great spot that intros this. If you haven't seen that, you need to check it out on our website where you can actually see the video of all those clips. I love that from that was uh, War Games. I wish I didn't know any of this. So many people react to the truth that way. It's, it's really, you can't avoid it. By not knowing about it. That's the key thing. Marlin in, Minis in Michigan has been waiting a long time. We've been talking about how Mike Rogers is going to be leaving, uh, stopping his cheerleading for the NSA and the Congress. And now he's going to become a talk radio host. Marlin, what do you make of it? Well, first of all, um, I definitely, um, I look at him and I, and I know for a fact, I mean, he's, he's me a con all day. Um, but my, my only concern is, is that I hope that people you know, who listen to the show, people who are, you know, in the know or what have you. Because me, myself, I mean, I unfortunately voted for Barack Obama like twice. And shortly after voting for him that second time, that's when I became aware, learned about NDAA. And mm -hmm. ever since that point, I mean, I've been in direct, you know, in, in, in conflict with Democrats and Republicans uh, to a certain extent. Um, my, my only concern is that I hope that people would call in and bombard his shows with, like, truth questions so that people would know you know, that he's not uh, who he purports to be. He's going to be just an agent to kind of, like, counteract info wars or, or drudge or what have you. Yeah. And I also had one more, one more thing I wanted to ask you. Um, I'm looking at this article that's on um, Global Research, and it's talking about uh, this Iraq nation destroyed, uh, oil riches confiscated, and, and surviving Iraqi population impoverished. And it goes on to say, it just says that since 1945, the United States, has presided over the killings of more than 46 million people in the global south through wars and neocolonialism in, in order to maintain Western economic dominance. And for the perspective of, like, viewers, just let that marinate in your mind as to what 
we're underneath here when we talk about what can we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have a country that's willing to kill that many people, um, you know, I, I understand where people come from when they say, what can we do? Because in, in actuality, it's not, I mean, it, it, it's even more than just the information of war. Most definitely get, get on our research or what have you. But what is that next step, you know, once we do get informed? Because we do constantly find that battle of what it is that we can do. Well, you know, you, they quoted it. They said, to maintain Western economic dominance. Uh, it's not, that's not exactly what's going on. A lot of people hear that and say, well, that's a good thing. I live in the West and I want us to be economically dominant. But it's not you. It's these banks. It's these, uh, the, the small group of people, the military industrial complex, the banks that basically put tarp over on us, the banks that are money laundering and get away with it because Eric Holder says that they're too big to jail. The banks that were too big to fail in 2008 are too big to jail in 2010, 2012. So it's this criminal group that is running it the way the, it's the military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. That's why we've been at war for 60 years continuously. That's why so many people have been killed. And people have to wake up to that, but they're always vulnerable to this pitting one group against another. And we see this, especially with these neocons that are going to this, uh, this coronation, I guess. So I guess they're really trying to uh, get some, some money from Sheldon Adel, uh, Adelson in Vegas. And we see this is reported from, um, it was on Drudge Report, how Chris Christie is trying to get back in the good graces of the Republicans after his Bridgegate scandal. And these guys are going to this multi-billionaire in Vegas and essentially trying to get on his good graces. This is a guy who gave $93 million in the last election. And so they're going there trying to get him to give them money. They're meeting with him privately. People like Chris Christie, people like Jeb Bush. And of course, uh, Governor Mike Huckabee won the Adelson Defender of Israel Award at the Zionist Organization of America's annual dinner in New York. John Bolton is there and he's criticizing Rand Paul, who's not there, but everybody is directing their, inf their criticism towards him, talking about American passivity. That was a quote from Jeb Bush. Uh, you've got all of these guys saying that, that uh, when Paul says that our foreign policy is too overreaching, no, we can't have that. We've got to be strong. We've got to get involved, even to the point that when Chris Christie talked about how he was in Israel, how much he loved Israel, he made the remark that he flew over occupied territories. And they didn't like that. Because you see, we don't occupy territories. We liberate territories, right? We're not occupying Iraq and Afghanistan. We're liberating those areas. And so he, when he met privately and kissed the ring of Sheldon Edelson, then he made it clear that he misspoke when he referred to occupied territories. He is an unwavering friend of Israel and he will do whatever they wish. The thing that I think was most amazing was the response. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, this is John Kasich of Ohio. And he repeatedly referred to Sheldon as if the billionaire was the only other person in the room, according to the New York Times. This guy is not auditioning for president. He's auditioning to become a puppet. Um, I hope you're right, Mar Marlon. I hope that people do call in to, uh, to Mike Rogers and badger him with the truth. I, going back to one of these uh, exchanges, this was back on October the 31st, we reported this on InfoWars. Mike Rogers argues that spying is okay as long as the government doesn't get caught. Mike Rogers said, uh, I would argue that we haven't had any complaints come forward with any specificity arguing that their privacy has been violated. So that clearly indicates that in 10 years, it clearly indicates that we must be doing something right. Somebody must be doing something exactly right. Now, the guy who was talking to him was a constitutional expert, Stephen Vladek. And he said, but who would be complaining? <laughs> and Roger said, oh, somebody whose privacy was violated. You can't have your privacy violated if you don't know your privacy is violated. And he says, I disagree with that. If a tree falls in the forest, it makes a noise whether or not you're there to see it or not. And then Roger says, well, that's a new interesting standard in the law. Yeah, it's a standard called objectivity. Anything else you wanted to say about uh, Mike Rogers, Marlon? Yeah, I wanted to add one more thing for our listeners is to look up his wife, uh, Christy Rogers. I mean, she just somehow secured, uh, I believe it was even like last year, the year before last, she secured like $10 billion uh, for mm -hmm. companies from the Department of uh, Defense. 
Yes. And this is all while, you know, Rogers was in office and doing what he was doing on the Internet Committee of, of Intelligence. Um, I just find that to be uh, very odd. And I wanted to ask you one more question.